time. In 1995, Congress passed the Jerusalem Embassy Relocation Act, which states that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, that it should remain an undivided city, and that the American Embassy should be relocated from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yet for more than 20 years, U.S. Presidents have signed waivers for stalling the Embassy move. To this day, 50 years after the liberation and reunification of Jerusalem, the State of Israel, one of America's strongest allies, is the only nation in the world in which the American government refuses to locate its embassy in the host nation's chosen capital. Now, as a candidate for president, Donald Trump promised to move the embassy to Jerusalem, and he has reaffirmed that commitment since taking office. And there are good reasons why the president will follow through with this commitment. For one thing, U.S. policy should recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital because Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for thousands of years and is the beating heart of modern Israel. Why should we reject the chosen capital city of a close ally? Second, Israel's stewardship of Jerusalem, Jerusalem's holy sites has been tremendous, especially regarding religious freedom. During the Arab occupation of the old city of Jerusalem between 1949 and 1967, Jews were systematically discriminated against and Christians were treated as second-class citizens. Most of the old city's synagogues were destroyed or desecrated. Under Israeli sovereignty, religious freedom is the rule and the holy sites, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim, are treated with care and respect. The disrepair that plagued Jerusalem under Arab occupation has given way to a flourishing city that is one of the world's crown jewels. Third, following through with the commitment to move the embassy will demonstrate American leadership. Leaders in the Middle East respect the strong horse and acting with decisiveness to defend American interests and to stand by a close ally is far more preferable to defaulting on a key promise like past leaders have done. Fourth, the embassy can be relocated to one of the sites in Jerusalem that the U.S. already controls. This can be as simple as changing the sign on one of the existing consulates. For example, the consulate annex in Arnona, combined eventually with the adjacent Diplomat Hotel, can be a sizable complex that provides adequate security. That the annex in Arnona straddles the 1949 armistice line also counsels in its favor as a potential site. The Trump administration has delayed moving the embassy in light of its efforts to pursue a peace deal between Israel and the Palestinian Arabs, but there are incremental steps that the Trump administration could take in the meantime. The State Department should allow Americans born in Jerusalem to list Jerusalem Israel on their passports. The U.S. Ambassador should make a point to conduct at least part of his work week from Jerusalem. And the American consulates in Jerusalem should report to the American Embassy in Israel not directly to the State Department. Now, some say the U.S. can't move its embassy to Jerusalem because that would enrage elements of the so-called Arab street and provide a pretext for acts of terrorism. And who knows, that may be true, but does it make sense to shirk from doing what's right for fear of what our enemies might do? With the advent of the Trump administration, the U.S.-Israel relationship is probably stronger than it's ever been. Our countries have shared security interests, common cultural ties, and mutually beneficial economic relationships. Relocating the embassy to Jerusalem, especially if done in 2017, uh, the 50th year anniversary of Jerusalem Day, will make the relationship that much stronger. I want to welcome our distinguished panel of witnesses here today. We look forward to hearing your testimony, and I'm happy to rec recognize my friend, the ranking member, Mr. Lynch, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for, for holding this hearing.